Welcome back to the show. I'm delighted to introduce to you Sherry Ann. She has a beautiful voice and a powerful God story. And uh, she has a, a beautiful CD called A Closer Walk. Will you help me to welcome to Babby's house, Sherry Ann. It's good to see you. Welcome to the show. It's great to meet you. And it's great to meet you, too. <laughs> this is a mutual uh, Admiration Society. Thank you. <laughs> so happy to have you on the show, Sherry thank Ann. You. Tell me a little bit about your story. I understand that you were born with a bilateral hearing impairment. Yeah. Define that. What does that mean? So I have a hearing loss in both of my ears, um, but it wasn't picked up until I was five years of age. Mm. Um, growing up in a difficult home, um, a lot of different uh, tragedies and things like that. Um, there was just a lot going on. And so it wasn't picked up right away. Uh, kids talk different and cute when they're real small. So I would say things like Elvis Pretzel and Shirley Pimple instead of Elvis Presley and Shirley Temple. But kids do that, so you don't know right away that something might be wrong. And so it wasn't until I got to kindergarten and was actually kind of failing out of some of my uh, uh, grades, if you will. I was uh, getting bad grades and my report card um, for not um, listening and things like that. So um, they thought maybe I was a problem child instead of a child with a problem mm -hmm. way back when, mm -hmm. when I was born. And in school, they, don't have, they didn't have all the intervention programs like they do now. So thank God the school nurse did a physical. And mm. at that point, she detected, I think there's something seriously wrong here. I think she has a real hearing loss. So this problem was not discovered until mm -hmm. you were five. Having all kinds of problems wow. <laughs> with speaking and school and home life. And so my mom took me to the first doctor. And he just said, nope, she's just a spoiled brat. What? She's listening when she wants to. No way. And so, thank goodness, she took me to the second doctor who said that, um, no, she's actually quite brilliant. You see, she's learned how to compensate by lip reading. Mm. So when I'm looking at her right now, she's hearing everything. But when I turn around, she hears nothing. And they gave me my first hearing aid. My grades went up. My second hearing aid, my grades shot through the roof. And then I became an overachiever, which was another problem. <laughs> So, yeah. So how much of a hearing loss do you have? Um, you know, it's hard to say because um, it goes from almost normal in the low tones, which is why I grew up loving your voice. Oh, wow. And then almost to, uh, pro it is profound in the higher frequencies. So birds and phones and whistles and bells and high pitches and consonants. I hear all the vowels, A-E-I-O-U. So they tell me I hear about 23% of the alphabet and all the consonants I don't hear at all. And I look at the lips for uh, formation of the lips for consonants to figure out what you're saying. So how, how has your ability or inability to, for example, to hear high pitches or high tones impacted the, the, uh, inton not the intonation, but the yeah. depth of your, of your singing voice? You know, uh, I've had a heart to sing since I was, you know, five years old and a little hairbrush singing. That's all I wanted to do. Um, but at that time, uh, we didn't grow up in a big gospel church. And so at that time, mom said, you've got to get a real job. You can't be a singer. She didn't know about gospel <laughs> music and singing for the Lord. And so um, I always wanted to do it. And, but I pursued chiropractic at the time. Well, as time went on, technology got better and I got better hearing aids, and I got speech therapy, and I got vocal lessons, and I learned how to hear pitches and how to, uh, through the piano, the piano was very instrumental, and my vocal teacher, Holly Weiss, she would play it and then make me memorize it. So it's muscle memory, they tell mm. me, is how I learned the pitches and the placement. Um, certainly, the songs that are lower are stronger for me. The higher ones are more of a challenge, but with the muscle memory and the pitch recognition, I get through it, and the Lord's help. The Lord's help. That is beautiful. That is such a God story. Yeah. So as you began to graduate or begin to f be more and more comfortable with singing, yeah. I mean, to, to make a CD, I mean, that's a pretty big step. So when did you make the decision to do this music thing, I mean, for real? Yeah. I mean, this is a real big step by faith to say, I'm going to, I think I'm going to step out on stage yeah. and I'm going to sing and I'm going to even make a recording. Yeah. When did you make that decision? It was a huge step of faith. In my very first project, I called it Thank You. Did it at the Gaither Studios, of which you're a part of that family. And so um, 
I th wanted to thank everybody who encouraged me. I had been encouraged for a long time to do this. Did the chiropractic thing, made mom happy, got the degree. <laughs> and I just couldn't, you know, that desire, you just yeah. can't quench yes, that. Yes. And so um, found out about you through my mother. Um, somebody shared the gospel with my mom in nursing school. And she had shared some gospel music with us, which is what I loved growing up, um, but especially black gospel. Heard your voice, started to get exposed to the Gaithers and said, oh, I can do that. I want to sing like that. I can sing and put that to use for God's glory. And um, went to a Gaither concert, began to meet all the artists, told them I was a chiropractor, and they were, oh, we love chiropractors. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of took me on board to work on them. And mm. in, in exchange for payment, I said, just give me your music. And so in addition to your CD, I started getting all these different CDs, and I kept hearing more and more Southern and country gospel, things I didn't grow up with. And um, I said, I, I can do this. I can do this. And of course, I found out Bill Gaither had a studio, went there, recorded it, and that just kind of opened up all the doors. As you talk about, God will open up the uh, windows, windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And you will not have room <laughs> to receive it. Amen. So that's Malachi what happened. chapter 3, verse 10. Yeah. That's powerful. So tell me about your opportunities that you have today. Uh, do you do you travel? Do you yeah. sing? Do you speak? Do you share your story? How often do you get a chance to do this? So I do the chiropractic just part time now because I have patients that really want me to keep working with them and um, and they have there's a great mission field in my office. So I'm doing that part time. But weekends, full time, I'm out there singing. Wow. I've been on TBN, um, several other TV shows, Huntley Street in Canada. Now now your program opened up for a number of the Gaither Homecoming artists. Um, so I'm all over from Canada, across the United States, and wherever people call me. Uh, TV and singing and concerts, That's women's cool. events, conferences, yes. youth events. Do you find that um, the fact that you are hearing impaired, do you have an opportunity to sing for other people who are hearing impaired or events where they might, where there might be a number of them in the audience? You know, I find out that uh, this is an inspiration for a lot of people. And so, second project, I worked with Gordon Moat, and Gordon Moat is completely blind. And we joke about that being the blind leading the deaf. Uh, <laughs> so we had fun. and. Um, because of that, we've done some, I opened for him a few times, and I found that a lot of people with disabilities were really inspired by what we do. And so, yes, I've been asked to sing for some deaf, different deaf organizations. I represent a deaf organization, ICCD, International Christian Centers for the Deaf, and it brings the gospel and funds and missionaries to areas where the deaf are not taught the gospel. You know, the good news is no news if you can't hear it. Mm. So now I see that God has given me a voice through this speech impairment. He's given me a voice to go out and help others who can't speak for themselves. So yes, there's a lot of opportunities to go out and inspire others that have overcome childhood obstacles and challenges and disabilities. Yes. Did you, do you happen to sign? Do you know the... I talk with my hands yeah, a lot. I see. You talk with your hands a you lot. You know, I'm Italian from New York. <laughs> so um, that's part of it. But I know some sign from being around deaf culture and also because it's so beautiful. And so when I sing, I incorporate some of it because I'm so visually oriented. I mean, I look to hear. I have eyes that can hear because I read lips. So I use my hands because I think it's so expressive and so beautiful and part of telling the story. Wow, that is so beautiful. You know. You're going to sing for us in just a little bit. So you all stay tuned because after this break, we're going to hear some beautiful music from Sherry Ann.